All right, first question is from Rebel Hammond. When buying supplements such as creatine or protein powder, what ingredients or value should I look for to know if I'm getting the best bang for my buck? Oh, mm. yeah, that's a good question. Um, so let's start with creatine. Creatine is uh, by far the most, uh, one of the most studied and supported by studies, uh, ergogenic supplements ever. Ergogenic meaning performance enhancing. Mm -hmm. The vast, vast majority of these studies that show that creatine is safe and effective for muscle growth and recovery and strength. And now they're showing it's got heart health, uh, you know, benefits and brain cognitive boosting benefits. It's got benefits for older, older populations, all that stuff. All those studies, almost all of them use creatine monohydrate, pure creatine monohydrate. All these other versions of creatine that you see. It's like spinoffs. It's all, they're all trying to capitalize on the, on the fact that creatine is effective and trying to find a way to sell it for more money. That's what it feels like to me is it's just like a brand, like a marketing way to, to, to sell like other versions thinking that, that there's some other benefits you get. It's totally. like what casein is to like whey protein. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like, the, it's the same thing. It's yeah. like the, the little bit of value. It's like you're splitting hairs on the difference of it. It's like if you, I would get whatever is cheaper, purer and cleaner. I think third party testing is something that you want to look at. This yes. made me think about like, cause you know how it's all coming out with it's being more of a wellness uh, type of a product, yeah. like how they're going to like repackage it and, and, and market it like what other terms they might use with creatine yeah with the wellness market what you'll probably see is creatine combined with like four or five other ingredients that are supposed to be good for wellness right and i think that's more of a, a marketing strategy because the wellness space most people know creatine is like build muscle bodybuilder right so if you're trying to sell it to wellness people no it'll be focus energy you know it'll yeah be, it'll be like that. mitochondrial health you know it might oh, say right. something like that yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it'll say that but it, it won't. <laughs> I mean, do, you, do, do you people picture, read that and be like, whoa, yeah, I don't know yeah, what that yeah, is, but yeah. I think it's good for me. Come on, guy. You're, yeah. a, you're a marketing you guys guy. You guys, always, you guys always doubt me. You always doubt me. Mitochondrial I, health. I, I know, the biohacking <laughs> space is all about mitochondrial health. That's all they talk about. Yeah. Trust me. They're also aware, I think, of creatine. I'm thinking, it. It, I think, I'm thinking of the target. average person. Yes, the average person. I think it's going to be more like clear, focus, energy. It'll be something like Maybe, that. That's yeah. what I would think. But I would look for, like you said, Adam, third-party testing, purity. Um, if you want the benefits of creatine, just take it by itself in powdered form. That's where you're going to get the best value. If you want it to be augmented, um, I know uh, Legion sells it with L-carnitine tartrate, which uh, helps with recovery. So that's not a bad product. But really, you could just buy it on its own, get a good, pure source and I think you're totally fine. You don't need to get it all, you know, crazy with everything. Well, else. and that's similar to protein. Now, protein, there was a there was a major moment for me where this like light bulb went off, and I don't remember at what point in my career, but I I, I started like flipping around the label and like breaking down because there was this huge discrepancy. I mean, you back then you could get like a bottle of designer whey protein for like twenty something bucks, and then you could pay as high as like seventy bucks. So there was mm. this huge range mm -hmm. of like these protein powders and aside from like the third party testing because i think that's a, a must is looking at so you know to, and and uh, you're better off going with bigger names name brands that are more credible for those reasons but besides that the number one thing with protein is actually just mathematically figuring out how much protein is in the entire jug based off the dollar amount mm. because there's a lot of tricks that they use on labels where it's like you know, it's a great deal, but then it takes two scoops of protein powder just to yeah, get it up. Yeah, look at the serving size. Right, yeah. you, it takes two scoops just to get it to twenty-four grams or thirty grams of protein, and then there's only twenty servings inside there. Mm -hmm. And then you can buy another one that has seventy servings in it, but then it's a lot. So you got to really, you're really paying for the protein, right? Protein's expensive, so. You know, what labels tend to do is they, they manipulate the serving size to try and make you think it's a better deal that you're getting. So the best thing that you could do with protein, once you've figured out, okay, this is a credible source, it's third-party tested, or it's a big name, is to flip it around, mathematically figure out how many total grams of protein is in the entire jug, divide that by how much the total jug cost, and then start going down. And you'd be surprised how actually close they are in pricing. Yeah. You know, they're not they're not that as as wide of a gap. The as margins are small. Small they on are. protein. It's such a competitive market that, like Adam said, if you find if they're if they're literally you know similar, the price is probably going to be very similar. Mm -hmm. Now for whey, there's a few different types that you can get. There's concentrate, which is the 
probably the least expensive version. Concentrate has got a little bit of carbs in it and some other stuff. And by weight, it's at the lowest percentage of protein, but it's not bad at all. <laughs> then you have Isolate. Isolate is, you know, where just they pure. take everything out mm -hmm. except for the protein. So you're just getting protein. And the difference you're looking at between concentrate and isolate is like, you know, five, seven grams of carbs. Not a big deal for the average person. If you're like measuring and weighing everything, maybe it can make a big deal. Um, and then there's hydrolysate, which is where they they pre-digest it so it's, you know, quote unquote, easier to to digest for the body. We are literally splitting hairs with all of those things. It's yeah. not that big of a deal. Um, to go from one, uh, yeah, to I would the look other. at price. To me, if it's if they're all all things equal, purity and price, yeah, yeah. And, and that is what is the deciding. And then a, a taste, you know, if they're all equal as far as the quality, the next thing I want is is one that actually tastes or mix really well. Yeah, but now if you're going with plant proteins, um, then there's a, there's something some other stuff you want to look for. Plant proteins on their own typically do not have the same uh, usability bioavailability or the what they will do they'll cons they'll call they'll score protein by their amino acids how available the protein is to the body uh, for lack of a better explanation it's essentially how much of that protein is going to be used for muscle and all that kind of stuff so which one is you know more effective for the body animal sources on their own versus plant sources on their own the animal sources just they crush them so with plant sources of protein, you need know, one that's a variety. One. Yeah, you want combinations that complement each other. So Organifi's protein does this, right? Organifi's protein's got several different plant pro. It's not just you know pea. you know pea or hemp or whatever. It's a combination of different things so that it gets closer to the bioavailable uh, bio uh, bio bioavailability. bioavailability. Yeah. Thank you. Easy yeah. for you to say. Yeah. Uh, uh, of uh, of whey or animal. Yeah, you know, back protein. to uh, creatine now. Is there so I, I was actually curious about this because of vegans and how we know like it it definitely has a lot of benefit for them uh, cognitively. Um, is there is there actually synthetic versions or or is this like I mean does this come from animal products as, as in the powder? No, form? you can get vegan. That's uh, you can get creatine that's vegan sourced. Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, the vegans don't eat it, right? Because creatine is only found in animal sources. Right. But so the body makes important. yeah, and the body makes its own creatine by using amino acids to synthesize it. Um, so you're gonna you're not gonna necessarily be at a deficiency. However, consistently. Vegans who supplement with creatine get a cognitive boost more than anybody else, which tells me that you're it's if you're a vegan, you yeah. probably should supplement with creatine. 